All right, so the fundamental theorem of linear algebra I'm going to present to you as a picture instead of a, a formal statement, and it ties together just about all of the ideas that we discussed throughout Chapter 2 and Chapter 4. Determinants don't really show up, but um, the idea of what do we see when we, uh, we look at a system Ax equals b uh, for some m by n matrix A. Uh, what do we see in terms of subspaces? Well, there's actually there's a really interesting story here. So let's take a look. First off, um, if, if A is m by n, then that means this, this matrix product Ax equals b has this form over here. So we've got uh, m rows and n columns. That means that the vector we're multiplying has n entries, so it's in Rn. And the, the vector that we get out, b, the product, is going to have uh, m entries, so it will be an entry of, or an uh, element of, of Rm. So let me draw a picture of Rn here. So here's, here's Rn, and so here's some point um, x. So x is an element of, of Rn. And this is, um, uh, let's see, so now I'll explain why it looks like this crazy thing that I drew in, in just a moment. Um, but first, let me make another copy of it over here uh, that we can put B in. So over here, this is going to be, uh, let me just give it a little twist just to make it cute. And um, so over here somewhere, uh, here in the, the blue, this will be B. OK. And uh, actually, you know what? Let me move it slightly here we go B that's where he'll be okay so <clears throat> the idea then is that we are uh, multiplying X by a and it is getting sent here to B so this is a X equals B happening right there now we talked in the um, last section about how uh, the null space is orthogonal to all the rows of A. So if I take this green portion here to be the null space of A, um, then I can break up X. I can actually project it uh, onto this subspace. So I have some component which is uh, down here. And oh, well, that was supposed to be. Uh, orthogonal projection. There we go. Okay, that looks more like a right angle to me. Okay, so orthogonal. So I can project it down here, and so here there's going to be some some component xh for homogeneous, and the homogeneous um, part is going to get mapped to zero. So axh equals zero. Meanwhile, there's going to be the, the other part, so I can project to the uh, other subspace here. And uh, this part right here I'll call xp for particular. Uh, this one also gets mapped under multiplication by a to the point b. And so this is a, a visual expression of the idea that uh, whenever you have this ax equals b equation, this is the same thing as um, uh, you have one particular solution satisfying ax p equals b. And if you add any homogeneous solution, so any element of the null space onto it, then uh, you will still have a solution to this system. So the solution looks like a particular solution plus some homogeneous. And we've seen that uh, for differential equations as well as for matrices. And we'll continue to see that for differential equations when we look at higher order differential equations in, in the next section. So, so the way I've drawn this, um, it's supposed to be the case that uh, this, this blue plane and this green plane are orthogonal to each other, meaning that if I have any vector here in the green, it's going to be orthogonal to any vector up here in the blue. Uh, now. This is there's sort of a limitation because that would make it a four-dimensional space and we can't really draw that blah blah. Just go with me here. It's an artist interpretation. Pretend it makes sense, okay? Um, because it's pretty. So we'll just go from there. Um, so let's see. So what do we have? So the the part that's orthogonal to the null space 
is what we call the, the uh, actually, let me put this in blue, is what we call the, the row space of A. And, and so this is the, um, the span of the rows, is the row space of A. So that's all linear combination of combinations of, of rows. Um, now, at the same time, uh, we've also seen that uh, over here on the right-hand side, we have Rm. Uh, that's where B lives. B lives in Rm. <coughs> And if I take the transpose of A, then uh, A transpose is going to be an N by M matrix. And so it's going to be defining a multiplication that goes in the opposite direction. So multiplication by A goes this way. Multiplication by A transpose goes this way. And so I have the um, transpose, uh, the null space of the transpose here in green. And what else do we have? Well, we have that the, um, <coughs> the range of A, so the range oops, of A. Uh, from the definition of matrix multiplication, uh, B is going to necessarily be a linear combination of columns of A with coefficients given by X. So it's a linear combination of columns of A. So all possible Bs that you might get, those are going to be all linear combinations of columns of A. So in other words, the range of A is the same thing as the column space of A. The span of the columns of A. And so that's what we have here in the blue. Now you notice um, I drew B inside the blue plane. And that's because it's in the range. Now, if I chose B outside of the range, so if B is not equal to um, any linear combination of columns of A, then that means that we uh, cannot solve this this linear system. And so if I'd chosen some other thing, like uh, say I put B like floating out here, B prime we'll call it, floating out in space, um, <coughs> there's, there's not going to be a solution. Um, I will not be able to find an X that gets mapped to this, this point out here because any X that gets multiplied by A has to land somewhere inside the blue plane. So that's a picture of an inconsistent system. That's what it looks like. Now, the interesting thing is that that automatically uh, gives you a suggestion of, well, hey, if, if I can't uh, solve this equation, what's the next best thing I can do? So let me revise my picture here a little bit. And so <clears throat> now, uh, if we were given B prime, then the closest you could come to solving AX equals B is actually to find the closest solution. And the closest solution would be this one you'd get by projecting straight down there. So this, even though you can't find AX equals uh, B prime, you can find AX equals B. And you can do this orthogonal decomposition of B prime into um, something that's in the null space of a transpose down here which I will call E for error, and B over here. So I have B prime is equal to B plus E. And I have that um, A transpose of E is 0, because it's in the null space of A transpose. And I have that AX equals B is solvable. And so uh, a lot of times people do this in statistics or anywhere else. By the way, the process of finding this B that is the uh, next best solution to this system is called root mean square uh, approximation. So if you've ever seen that, or curve fitting, line fitting, that kind of thing, that's exactly what this is talking about. Um, meanwhile, uh, if you go back and you count up 
dimensions, let's see what we've got. Well, we have that Rn over here is actually, um, <coughs> it's going, it's made up of things in the uh, row space of A and things in the null space of A. And since the row space and null space are orthogonal, it's customary to put this circle plus around each side. Uh, similarly, for Rm over here, we have that or Rm is the orthogonal direct sum of the row space of a transpose and the um, null space of a transpose, which I now no longer have room to write. Okay, And the null space of uh, a transpose. And just in case uh, it's not clear from this equation that I already wrote down uh, right, right here, uh, the span of the columns of A is exactly the same thing as the span of the rows of A transpose. So this is the row space of A transpose, the, the column space of A. So this is the um, column space of A and the null space of A transpose. Or if you like, the range of A and the null space of A transpose. And so for my final trick, if we uh, count up the dimensions about what's going on in this guy right here, then we have that um, <coughs> the dimension of Rn has to be equal to the dimension of uh, the row space of A plus the dimension of the null space of A. And the dimension of the row space, so that's the number of linearly independent rows that A has. Um, and you know what? The dimension of the null space, it has actually a name because it comes up. This one is called the nullity of A. Um, <coughs> so on the left, we have the dimension of Rn is n. And on the right, we have the number of independent rows. Oh, wait, hold on a second. That is the number of pivots in the reduced row echelon form of A. Because if I row reduce, I'm going to get um, the number of non-zero rows is the same as the number of pivots. And the number of pivots is called the rank. So this is the rank of A plus the nullity of A. And so the rank of A is often written as R. And the nullity is just going to be um, n minus R. And so this is the equation that we've been using before, where we talk about uh, the total number of variables, right? The total number of coordinates in xn is your total number of variables. And then we have the um, number of pivots. And then we have the number of free parameters. And that's how we determine the number of free parameters um, when we solve ax equals 0. And so taken as an equation in and of itself, it looks like the world, world's most worthlessly stupid equation because uh, n is equal to r plus n minus r. Well, that's like bleedingly obvious because uh, the r's cancel and n equals n. So big, fat, hairy whoop, right? But if you look at the structure that all this is describing and, and we go back to this picture, the picture is really quite beautiful.